Hi guys. Welcome. I just got done walking around in like 97 degree weather to pick up my child. So, excuse me. Today's video, we're going to talk about my October TBR and just for the record, I wanted it to be like spooky, thrillery, mystery, because it's October. Yeah, so that's happening. Um, so let's go ahead and just like dive right in to what I'm going to try and read in October. First things first, um, I have already started this. I'm already, I'm already, I'm only 56 pages into it, but that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Um, I just figured this was a dark enough fantasy book <laughs> to count towards my spooky theme. <laughs> um, I don't know a ton about it except for that it is a part of a trilogy and Dark Dawn, the final book in the trilogy, came out recently and holy mother, I don't know anything about it, but it sure created quite the stir on Twitter and that piqued my interest. So um, I went ahead and picked up Nevernight from my library and have started reading it. It is about a girl who basically witnesses her entire family, well, she witnesses her father get hanged. Um, I don't think that's a spoiler because I'm only 56 pages into it and already know about it. Um, and the rest of her family gets ripped away from her. And now she is going she, and looking for an assassin school um, so that she can train to be an assassin and get her revenge. So far it's been quite graphic. My, just for the record, my library has this in the YA section. Can someone tell me if this is actually supposed to be YA? Because let me tell you, I think not. I think not. Um, yes, our main character is only 16. However, the first chapter closer to the 18 range, but still, not so much. I will say so far the writing has um, been a little bit for me to get used to. Um, it's definitely written in a different kind of style. <laughs> and um, Jay Kristoff takes a note out of Terry Pratchett's book with the footnotes. <laughs> Um, which have also taken a bit to get used to. So just keep that in mind if you're planning on picking this up. But I am pretty excited to see if this lives up to all of the hype surrounding it. Next, this is a, another library pickup for me, and that is The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. Um, I read a couple months ago Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware and did not like it, just for the record. However, people keep telling me about how good her other novels are, so I wanted to give her another shot. So I went ahead and picked this one up. Um, honestly, I haven't even read the synopsis of it. I just wanted to get another Ruth Ware book <laughs> in hopes that I would enjoy it. <laughs> Hold please. Okay, so this book, um, doesn't really give us much in the synopsis at all except for the fact that it is about a girl who gets a mysterious inheritance from a relative that she didn't know existed. Um, and when she goes to claim that inheritance at this um, estate, all kinds of weird crap starts happening. So uh, I kind of like going into a mystery not really knowing much. So sorry about the glare. Um, like I said, this is from the library, so it's got like that plastic on it. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm, I've got, I've got hopes. I, I don't have high hopes because like I said, I did not like Turn of the Key. However, I will say Turn of the Key did surprise me. There were some twists in there that I wasn't expecting. That was actually the only thing I liked about it. Um, I just didn't like the rest of the story. <laughs> so we shall see. Okay, the next book that I have that I'm excited to read this month is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, 
I'm pretty excited about this one. I've heard some great things about it. Um, I know that the finale of the series was, it was just released, wasn't it? Like really recently. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that and I've heard great things. I've heard great things. It's, um, I, I honestly can't entirely remember exactly how this storyline goes. Obviously it takes place in the era of Jack the Ripper and I'm pretty sure she's like a female medical examiner almost, um, or forensic something. And she kind of gets obsessed with like finding Jack the Ripper and kind of falls in love with him, I think. I don't remember, but I'm pretty excited to find out. <laughs> so we shall. Okay, next we have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. And this one I picked up because I read Lock Every Door, um, like right after it came out and I loved it. So I wanted to read another Riley Sager book. This one is about basically these, these girls, they go to a summer camp and two of them disappear, I believe. And the one who doesn't disappear grows up and then ends up getting a job at that same camp and starts finding these clues to the disappearance of her friends um, and like what really happened there. So I'm pretty excited. I really, really love Riley Sager's like writing style as far as thrillers go when I read um, Lock Every Door. So I'm hoping that this will be written similarly. I have high hopes for this because I did love the other one. So next is another one that I have actually already started and I am reading it on my Kindle and it is The Adversary by Reese Hirsch. Now I did, this is another one where I'm like giving the author a second chance because I read Black Nowhere by Reese Hirsch and did not like it. Um, like at all. Um, this one is a little bit different. It still has that like technology crime aspect to it. It's about a lawyer who actually takes on big corporations as clients and basically what he does for them is he goes and hunts down hackers that have gotten into their systems to basically prevent a big like media circus meltdown for the corporation. Um, so he gets himself a little in over his head with one in particular and basically it's about that. Um, I really don't know what else to say about it without spoiling anything because um, I don't want to talk about like how far I've gotten into it or anything like that. But so far I'm enjoying this one way more um, than the other one. So I'm like as I go my hopes are getting like higher and higher. And I did say that I was kind of excited to pick up another one of his books even though I didn't like the last one because I liked his writing style. Like he, I felt like he had a really good talent for writing. I just didn't like the characters or the plot <laughs> in the last one. But so far I like this character um, and the, the plot is pretty good. So I've got, I've got some high hopes on that one as well. This is one that I just started and it is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus, and I'm listening to it on audio. Um, I've heard really great things about it being, you know, like a YA mystery thriller kind of a thing. Um, and it's been on my to read list for a little while. So I went ahead and picked it up via audio from my library and I'm only on chapter two. And I don't have a lot of details about it, except for that it's told in multiple points of view, um, which I really kind of like in a book. So um, I'm pretty, pretty excited about that one too. I don't really want to know much more than that. And that's kind of how all of these are for me, just simply because I find that I get more enjoyment out of mystery, thriller, suspense, those kinds of books when I don't know what, I don't even know the synopsis. So the next one that I have also on audio is You by Carolyn Kepnes. This one I am expecting to completely freak me out. Um, so it's making me just a little bit nervous, but it's basically told from the point of view of the stalker <laughs> of this woman. <laughs> and he's like hardcore obsessed with her. And I think it's going to be creepy. And that's really all I know about it. <laughs> and I'm kind of scared already because, you know, 
Okay, and then the last one I picked up on audio was Sadie by Courtney Summers. And the whole, the entire reason I picked this one up on audio was because I was actually recommended it on audio because it's told in like more of a podcast format. Um, I can't remember what this book is about at all. It's been on my audio want to read for months. Um, because again, I was, I was told like the way that it's written, you get more enjoyment out of it via audio. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that one too. And again, I have no idea what it's about. I could look up the synopsis, but I don't want to. Cause again, I kind of like not knowing, you know? All right. Another one, this one was so, <laughs> such a controversial decision for me <laughs> because this author is so sleazy. Like as a person, I don't even like almost even holding this book makes me want to gag a little. Um, <laughs> but it's The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. Um, if you don't know anything about this author, uh, you can go look him up. He's, in my opinion, basically a con artist. Like, he's not a very good person. However, I picked this, as you can tell by the glare, I picked this up from the library so that I wasn't actually giving the man my money. <laughs> because I am really curious about the book because it's gotten so much praise. So I really do kind of want to see what it's about. But again, I wasn't giving the man my money. Because... Um, but basically this, the synopsis of this book gives me complete rear window vibes. It's about a woman who basically never leaves her house and she sees something. Thank you, Hitchcock. That's been done. I'm going into this kind of wanting to hate it, not gonna lie. Um, but we'll see if that's actually the case. I've heard it's really good. I've heard it's really good. And I don't want to like it. Fair warning. I'm going to try and not be biased, but I don't want to like it. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but that's on my list. Okay, another one also on my Kindle is An Equal Justice by Chad Zunker. And this is a Kindle first read, and it is another one about an attorney. Um, I don't know why I'm like super into like mystery thrillers with attorneys, but I am. Give me all the John Gershon books, please. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Just kidding, I've already read them all. <laughs> um, <laughs> not the point. <laughs> Uh, but basically he, not he, this, we follow this main character and he is this guy who grows up pretty poor and goes through law school and everything and then gets this super awesome high paying job with a super prestigious law firm and he's like living the life that he's always wanted to live, right? And then some shady shit starts happening and then he starts investigating it. <laughs> And turns out his little hotshot law firm might be the cause of all the shady shit. So we'll go ahead and get into that one. It sounds really good. Sounds exactly like the kind of thriller I would love to read. So we're going to do that. Okay. This is going to be the last one on my like official TBR, but then I have one that's like a bonus just in case I feel like it. Um, and that is this what is this? Dark Places by Jillian Flynn. Um, actually have no idea what this is about. Haven't read the synopsis yet. I'm gonna, excuse me, my legs falling asleep. I sit on the floor when I film. Is that weird? And I'm too old for this. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, God. I'm scared of this one, too. Um, for those of you who don't follow me on Goodreads, first off, you should. I'll link it down below. Um, Gone Girl is like one of my only five star thrillers ever. I'll have to go back and like double check that and make sure that I'm not like lying my face off right now. But Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn, oh man. If you haven't read it, please, please do. Unless you don't like books that are gonna totally F with your mind, then don't but read it. So that's the reason I picked this up. Um, I picked this one up. I don't know. Barnes Noble, I think was having like a sale on paperbacks of some kind. They were like buy two, get one free. And I did. <laughs> um, so 
I'm preparing for this to completely mess with me, which is why I'm scared of it, but I'm also preparing for it to mess with me in like a way that's so amazing. <laughs> Um, this basically we follow our main character, her name is Libby, um, and when she was seven, her mother and two sisters were murdered in something that became like nationally known as the Satan Sacrifice, because that sounds good. She evidently testified that her brother was the killer, so that's good. And I'm, I'm saying all of this like this because if this is anything like Gone Girl, then who knows what the truth really is here. <laughs> Could be anything. Um, so then we skip to 25 years later, and there's a secret society that's obsessed with notorious crimes, which of course she has experience with. Um, so they, they track her down and start like pumping her for details and she decides that she thinks that she can like make some money off of this whole thing that she's got going on, right? And I guess the club wants to like free her brother. I, I, I don't know. Um, so Libby goes on this hunt to like reconnect with other people who may have been involved in this tragedy that she experienced and next thing she knows she's traveling all over the world. Well, not all over the world all over the like southern midwest and all over the world <laughs> i'm so crazy um the truth emerges evidently it's a big deal and she finds herself on the run from a killer i'm assuming the actual killer because that's just how these things go right um anyway I'm like excited and nervous and completely freaked out by this book already <laughs> but also I kind of want to move it to the top of my stack I'll scare the crap out of myself right because that this will probably do it anyway and then like my bonus book if I get around to it is a reread of Wuthering Heights um, by Emily Bronte this is a classic and it's creepy as hell let's be honest super creepy If you don't think Wuthering Heights is creepy, then please tell me what you think it is, because I think it's creepy as hell. Um, love it. Creepy as hell. I've read it, I've, like, three or four times. I have multiple copies of this book. I love, I, I do, I love it. Yeah, so this is about Euclid and his childhood friend, and they fall in love, and creepy crap everywhere set in a creepy location. They're not supposed to be together, but they love each other. Can't be together. And it's creepy. All of it's creepy. And I love it. But anyway, Wuthering Heights, if I get around to it. Again, I've read this so many times and it's not like scary creepy, to be honest. It's just like, it's dark and creepy. Like, Heathcliff is creepy. Like, uh, it's creepy. <laughs> so if I get around to it, I'm gonna reread Wuthering Heights, um, just because. But it's not like at the top of my TBR. It's like a runner-up. That's what I'm trying to say. A runner-up. Yes. Anyway, those are my plans for October, um, and then in November I'm going to start I'm looking just in case you're wondering my to be red shelf is over here that's what I'm looking at I don't I don't have plans for November yet I have a bunch of stuff that I said I was gonna read last month and completely changed my mind because I'm a mood reader I don't think that'll happen this month because my mood is it's October and Halloween and I want all the creepy scary stuff I can get my hands on right um but last month I didn't read like anything I said I was gonna read uh, that's not true I read a lot of things I said I was gonna read but I did not read a lot of things I said I was gonna read <laughs> uh, yeah I got stuff on 
the shelf that needs to be gone through. Actually, next month I need to read The Ark of the Scythe because book three comes out in November, so that'll probably happen. But we'll talk about that then. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, please hit the subscription or subscribe button, that one. <laughs> and if you want to be notified of my uploads, hit the notification bell. Otherwise, my daughter's waking up for her nap, and I will leave you there. <laughs>